I ain't talking over that deep. Y'all doing all right? I said, are you doing all right? I don't look like you, but I was glad when they said, let her come into the house of the Lord. I'm going to ask you to please stand to your feet for a brief moment of prayer, followed by the reading of the word. With all the hearts and minds, let us please bow our heads. Turn to God our Father, we thank you for this blessed Sunday morning. We thank you for the divine opportunity that you have given us because you have shown upon us in your will this day of our life. We thank you, Lord, from the highest height to the lowest depth, Heavenly Father, because we know that without you, we have absolutely nothing. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for seeing fit in your will that you bestow upon us your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. And we are not going to take it lightly, Heavenly Father. We pray that you will visit us here this morning at your foundation, that you will come on in and find yourself welcome, wanted, and loved. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will visit us and you will show yourself strong in this service this morning. Let the word go forth and let it touch all that came to hear. As a matter of fact, Lord, let it touch those who did not come this morning to hear. And we're going to be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In the Son, Jesus' name, we shout glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let us give the Lord a warm welcome of applause. For he and he are all in the word of this truth. I'm going to ask everyone, can we see it now? But I'm going to ask everyone over here to my right, your left. If you can turn your Bibles to 1 Peter, the first chapter in the 18th through the 19th verses. There's the people on the right side. <clears throat> it's going to be 1 Peter, first chapter, 18 to the 19th verses. And to the people on my left or your right, I want you to read up Colossians 1 and 12 through 14. <clears throat> That's Colossians 1 and 12 through 14. Once again, to my right, 1 Peter 1 and 18 through 19. And to my left, it's going to be Colossians 1 and 12 through 14. When you have your perspective, verses can respond by saying amen. amen. <clears throat> While you're trying to look the pages, I'm going to have a sip of water because we know that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the word of God. Amen. And he needs some buttermilk biscuits, beans, and cornbread, like Pastor said, and he needs some water. From my belly shelf, <laughs> The <coughs> one has it. Amen. Yeah. All right. First Peter, first chapter, 18 through the 19th verse. And it reads, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ. A lamb without blemish or defect. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Now Colossians 1 and 12 through 14 and it reads, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of life. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and doing of his word. I have chose for this morning a, an, an umbrella, an umbrella message, because under that umbrella will come dozens, maybe even hundreds of other messages. And that is, let the voice of the redeemed sing to you. Let the voices of the redeemed sing to you. 
Now, what exactly is redemption? Redemption is defined as the action of saving or being saved from sin, error or evil. Also, the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for a payment or clearing of a debt. It is the action of saving or being saved from sin, error or evil, and the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for a payment or a clearing of a debt. Now, those of us who are thrifty and always looking for a bargain, you know, we can go to a store and we can clip out a little small square rectangular piece of paper out of the, the newspaper or whatever, out of the magazine. And we go to the store and we redeem a coupon for 25% off or 50% off or 75% off. But whatever the amount is, you can redeem that coupon for a lower price. Not exactly what is a coupon. A coupon is a voucher entitling the holder to a discount for a particular product. Correct. Now, when you look at the word coupon, you see the first word in that is coup. Or coup. See, when you uh, have lost your money and you try to get just a little bit of it back, you say, I'm here to recoup my losses. Meaning you need to get something back. And we see what's going on overseas. A lot of our war-torn countries, you have what is called a coup. A coup is defined as a sudden, violent, and illegal seizure of power from a government. As well as a normal or successful stroke or move. Mm -hmm. Now that's what we're going to go on this morning here, Church Foundation. This is going to be a notable or successful stroke or move. Thanks to God, it is time for us to move. Move on God's word. We are able to stand on God's word, but the only thing better than standing on God's word is moving on God's word. You know, I can have uh, an array of weapons. I can have an AR-15. I can have an M16. I can have an AK-47. I can have a, a 9 millimeter, or whatever that case may be. But if I don't have any ammunition, or I do have the ammunition, but I can't aim straight, then that gun is worth nothing. All right. All right. You have to have the proper training to know how to properly send effective uh, 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 ammunition downrange. I'm going to stop real quick. I'm going to ask some of our preteens. If you're in the sixth grade and older, please come on down to the front. Come on down to the front real quickly. If you're in the sixth grade, that's like after the fifth grade. Come on down here. If you can fall in behind uh, Sister Mary or uh, 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 Mother Eleanor. I'm going to say it again. If you are after the fifth grade, and you have not exceeded the 12th grade, fall in behind Sister Mary or Miss Eleanor with the man. There we go. In the words of Rick Flair, woo! And you're in the 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade, 9th grade, 11th grade. Come on down. You're the next contestant on the price is right. You can stand in over there by. And I'm asking y'all that for a reason. See, a lot of this message pertains to you. Okay, I think Sister Tasha and everybody else is going to got it now. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let us move along. We're here today to stay the coup against the devil. Which is a noble or successful stroke or move mm -hmm. through a sudden violent and illegal seizure of power from a government. <clears throat> it's time to move on the word of God. Now, redemption is basically salvation through reconciliation 
and forgiveness on a discount. It's a bargain nation for the believers. So how many of y'all know about this bargain? Mm -hmm. After redemption, then what? It requires action through the living word. You see, thanks to God, many of us don't want to move. This is why the Bible says that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. It's because we don't want to move. Now, a long time ago, I heard an old preacher man say, he said that, you know, he's talking to another young preacher. I was just sitting there listening. And he said that, you know, young preacher, he says, when you're dealing with black folk, as long as you keep it, Moses on Mount Sinai in the burning bush, as long as you keep it, Jesus and the woman at the well, as long as you keep it Daniel in the lion's den, as long as you keep it Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad Negro, then you'll be all right. That's what he said. That's the first time I ever heard Meshach, Shadrach, and a bad Negro. But I understood what he was saying. He was saying that, see, a lot of us, we get caught up in the monotony and the complacency of doing the same thing over and over and over again. That is the official definition of the word party. It is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And whenever you see the truth and you hear the truth and you know the truth, but you still want to believe a lie, that's a fool. But see, a lot of us have become so complacent and so lethargic and so sedentary in our duty and devotion to God it don't produce no fruit. And you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. Right, right. See, at least an apple tree that bears apple eggs, sometimes it bears rotten apples. Right. An orange tree in an orange orchid, it produces sometimes rotten orange. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, as Christians and believers, our tree don't bear nothing. At least with an apple, you can get the rotten part and cut it off and keep on moving. But a lot of times, our spiritual, tree, spiritual trees, they don't produce much fruit. Now, the four issues of life, Psalm 22, Psalm 10, but for the message I chose for them, the four issues of life are this. Number one, you must know who you are. Number two, accept your responsibility. Number three, decide your priority. And number four, face your difficulty. Know who you are, accept your responsibility, decide your priorities, and face your difficulty. Number one, knowing who you are. We are a child of the Most High God. Being a child means you are dependent on Him for everything. We are children of God. And another name for child is dependent. We are dependent because we are dependent on God for everything. Galatians 3 and 26 through 29 and it says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. I'm going to stop right there. There is neither male nor female. I'm going to deal with that later on. But you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That is our identity in Christ Jesus. See, a person that does not know who they are, that is called having amnesia. That's called being a zombie. You know, they got a TV show that comes on now, Night of the Dead or Walking Dead or something like that. The zombies or whatever, because they don't know who they are. They the walking dead. And anytime you don't know who you are, anybody can come and tell you who you are, and you'll go along with it because you don't know for yourself. See, we can all understand, at least us men can understand, is that when we go out here and we choose teams, you notice every team, they have a different color. They got a different jersey. And when they're playing at home, they wear one color, one type of jersey. And when they're playing away, it's enough. Everybody has a distinctive helmet with a distinctive mascot on it. 
That way, everybody knows who they are. Otherwise, we have a lot of mad confusion. Now, in knowing who you are, you know your role. You have the offense, you have the defense. And on the offense, you have everybody has a distinct position. You're the center, you have a quarterback, offensive lineman, you have a running back, you have wide receivers and so forth. And on the defense, everybody has their role. Everybody has their place because they know who they are. Now, when the center wants to go and try and be the quarterback, see, he ain't gonna have some problems. See, if, if, if the wide receiver, he wants to play like he's on defense, see, he's going to have a problem, see. Everybody has to know their role so they can properly play their role. Amen. And when they play their role, they, they know who they are. Amen. But see, along the way, we become a little discombobulated. Now, for those that don't know what discombobulated means, they don't know what you're doing. And this is why we see a downward spiral of the church today because we don't know what we're doing. We don't know who we are. Or we're trying to be something to somebody that we're not. All right. All right. All right. First Corinthians 6 and 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. They all belong to God. These clothes I have belong to God. This mind I have belongs to God. This heart I have belongs to God. Everything I have, it belongs to God. Yes, Lord. It's been given to us all alone. And see, I, I can remember one time I was a little boy, I was really big into uh, collecting Star Wars action figures and G.I. Joy and Transformers. And I had let one of my friends uh, play with one of my uh, Transformers or something. And he gave it back in a little Ziploc bag and one of the arms broke off of it. And I looked at it, and I was pretty upset. I said, hey, man, you, you broke my toy. Or whatever. And you owe me another one because you broke it. Now, that's how we act over a little toy. Now, just imagine with us being belonging, being property of God, and when he comes back, and we're a complete opposite of what he desired us to be. So how do you think God is going to feel? My Lord. I beseech you, brethren, for this is your reasonable service. Reasonable service means it makes sense that you offer your wife as a living sacrifice and testimony to God. What did you do with what I gave you for the specified time? That's how we act with that little stuff. I loaned you my shirt, or I loaned you my pants, and you brought it back dirty, you brought it back stinking, you didn't clean it up. <clears throat> You see how we act with this little mere perishable thing. See, this is why the word of God says, uh, 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 you were not redeemed with perishable things, silver and gold. Right. You were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Yes, yes, yes. For ye are bought with a price. Now see, if some of us older folks, we know we go out to, to, to purchase a car. And after you pay that car, they give you a title. You purchase a house, and if you pay it off, they give you a deed, or they give you a title. What is a deed? A deed is action. What is a title? A title is that something that belongs to you. What spirit of title do you carry? It doesn't matter if you are a bishop or you're an elder. It doesn't matter if you're a reverend or a pastor. It doesn't matter if you're a deacon or a deaconess. It does not matter if you are an usher. The only title that we need to be concerned with is Children of God. That's the only title we need to, to be concerned with. So I, I, I come across a whole lot of people, you know, well, I, I am attorney such and such. And you know, they talk to that very deep voice. And, and I am judge such and such. And I am congressman of senator such and such. And I am bishop of Ethan and Dr. Douglas. Such and such and that. And, you know, they, they, not only do they wear it on their collar, they wear it in their throat. <laughs> <laughs> but that don't mean anything when we're standing before the judge and see right. a and right. say, well done, my Lord and faithful servant. They say, my well done and faithful bishop. They didn't say, my uh, 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 faithful deacon. He didn't call you by your name. He said, servant. That's the word of God. 
Number two, our responsibilities. What are our spiritual responsibilities in terms of redemption? Preaching and spreading of the gospel message and others and others to bring others to Christ, active participation in church programs, giving and donating toward the growth of Christianity, holy living because God is holy. Hence, be ye holy for I am holy. All right now. And see, when you honor that responsibility, see, you can't go wrong. See, you can't be holy and go to hell. Well. But you can be holy and go to God. You can be holy and go to him. <laughs> Number three, we've got to decide our priorities. Living a life that is pleasing to God should be first and foremost because we belong to God. But it seems to be safe with God. Nowadays, we are more preoccupied with pleasing ourselves rather than pleasing God. And then it says that in the word of God that in the latter days, men will become lovers of themselves. They will become prideful. They will become boastful. They will become covetous. They will be given all over to unnatural acts of affection. They will be preoccupied with serving themselves and pleasing themselves rather than pleasing God. And you put God on the back burner. I'm going to deal with that one a little closer in, in a few minutes. And the fourth one is face your difficulty. There is no gain without pain. No advancement without adversity. No progress without problems. It's an endurance race. And, and, and I know a lot of us men, and of course those of you that are really big in college football or whatever sport you may uh, prefer, look at all the time, the games that you watch and you had one team and they start out the gate, the first quarter, man, they wide open, they're a hot ball of sight. Then the second quarter, see, they a hot ball of sight. And, you know, the little announcer come on to the city, and that is why they headed to the Super Bowl. Or that is why they in the Super Bowl. Or that is why they're in the, uh, the college football uh, um, championship game. And see, they get all excited. They kind of get a little relaxed. But see, after that halftime, the other team comes. And it don't take but one little play to turn the whole thing out of the game. Right. They come at other teams. You know, they 25, 30 points down, and they come back, recover that fumble, or they get that interception, that pick six, that block field goal, or whatever, and run it on in. And they come back some more, and come back some more. And then they get down to the wire. It becomes an issue of who wants the most. Mm -hmm. They put the ball to the upright, the cross over the goal line, or whatever, and they win the game. And a lot of people be sitting back looking crazy, like, how in the world did we bowl a 25 point lead? It's an endurance race. That's why the scripture tells us the race is not going to the past or to the slipper, but they who endure to the end. Yeah. And so I want the teenagers here to understand something over there. Miss Hannah, you got your, you got your hand on your chin. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was, right. See, a lot of people start out in high school, oh man, they cool, they man, oh man, she's a girl, oh man, she's a major red, she's a cheerleader. All that kind of good stuff. This guy, he saw a quarterback on the team in high school, man. They're a hot ball of fire. But if you see him on down the line in they mid twins or late twins or thirties, like, what, what happened? Life. I remember back in the yeah. day, man, you was cool, man. All the girls used to like you, man. Everybody wanted you. You was a queen, you was a homecoming queen, all that, man. You was a bad major red at Parker. You was the finest flag girl at Jane. You the baddest thing walking the hall this week. You the baddest thing in public. Or back when the white was white. See, I was a cousin that white was white. See, we ain't had no black white back then. I was a cousin. You showed up there with a black white on the side of the wall when your shirt was Yeah, it, it made it. And my line was talking to make it take it all the call your mom and bring it somewhere else. But back to the subject at hand. They start out like come out that gate and they find it. They find it. They go on down the street and jump along the way. Did they lose their time? But see, they don't understand that life is an endurance place. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to store you some energy. See, that's called kinetic energy. See, you want to get you some potential energy. You want to store you up some for a later time. That's biological, biological fact, scientific fact. All right. Many of the afflictions, many of the afflictions of the righteous. Why? Because these are afflictions of the devil. 
you got to know your enemy. Life is not a sprint, but a marathon. Life is a destination, not a journey. I mean, not a destination, a journey. You see, thank of God, I hope the young people understand this. Some of you all are sophomores, juniors, seniors, whatever. You, you start to take baby steps to be on your way. I want you to understand something, that in this life, there's going to be discouragement. There's going to be despair. There's going to be defeat sometimes. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be regret and so forth. But how you rebound from that is how you gain your victory. <clears throat> There's a lot of people, see, like the Thomas Edison and Albert Einstein and, and Louis Latimer and, and uh, 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 Brother uh, Maxinger, and that's your Black History Month in March uh, uh, cue right there. So these people, they didn't, the Alexander Graham Bell didn't discover or create the phone the first time he sat down and tried to make one. Thomas Edison, he didn't come out with the light bulb the first time he tried to make it. Dr. George Washington Carver and the thousand uses he had for the peanut and so forth, he didn't just discover that stuff overnight. See, he kept trying it and trying it and trying it and trying it until he got it right. It's an endurance. And see, in order to do something, he's got to work at it each and every day. You just don't roll like right a bed and you become an NBA superstar. You don't just roll like right a bed and become an NBA superstar. You don't just roll like right a bed and become a, a, a WBA and heavyweight champion of the world. It takes going at it every day. And this day you work on this muscle. And the next day you work on this set of muscles. And you work on your endurance. Just keep on and keep on till you got it back. But see, a lot of the young folks nowadays, you want something quick, fix, microwave, and overnight. There's no shortcuts to success. Don't let the enemy play with your mind and think you go out and sell you some dope. Or do this, that, and the other, and it's going to be all right. And some of y'all young women don't let nobody fool you that you can just put on. Uh, uh, a little shoestring and put it in your rear end and slide it down the pole, everything gonna be all right. I don't know no scribbles, but they call them now they get sorry. They're drawing no pension. I don't know no scribbles. I don't know no dope man that's collecting social security. But I all know. He thought it was gonna be a quick fix. There's no quick fix to Christ. It's a lifelong walk. And see, we get lost around because we don't have an identity. You don't have an identity, you don't have a plan. And see, as a result, you don't know the deal. And one of the biggest lies the devil ever told is that he does not exist. See, the devil don't exist, then that means there's no hell. If there's no hell, then I can do whatever I want to do. And there'll be no consequences. It's another big time, well, he was a big time bitch, called from somebody. That they he brought him and put him out the pool pit, but he said, Ain't no hell. But well, see, right there in the scripture tells you, these are the fallen people who will not inherit the kingdom and it rattles it off. You see, when the man looked up from hell right. and he wanted the man of God to dip his fingers in some water and put it on his tongue, where is he at? Hmm. Hmm. If, you, if you, these are the type of people who engage in such acts and activities and sin, they want to inherit the kingdom, but where are they going when they die? Going somewhere. But see, that's how the enemy is now. They play with the word, the semantics. Mm -hmm. You're not a stripper. You're an exotic band. You're not a <laughs> prostitute or a whore. You're a sex worker. Mm -hmm. They kind of legitimize prostitution now, but they got to play with the name. They want to call it sex worker. And he had Rahab in the Bible and said she didn't want to be a whore anymore. Don't you tell me there's not any psychological, spiritual complications and repercussions from that living that type of lifestyle. But see, the young people in here, notice what they put in front of you to tell you who to look up to. He's the prince of the air. He controls the sound wave, or the radio, the television, your cell phone, what you got in your hand. There's an airway. He's the prince of the air. But why is nobody knocking over the table and chairs to address you? and give you a spiritual plan for your spiritual walk. Mm. So that you can have a spiritual benefit and a spiritual payday, amen? Amen. Now, I'm gonna side step just a little bit. Mental health in the black community needs to be of a priority. And the biggest fear is fear itself. And see, that's how the devil sucks us out. It's fear. 
Now just imagine what we woke up and saw yesterday morning on the ground. What if we saw that today? There's been all the excuses some people need not to go to church. Right. Well, it's snow on the ground. Oh, it's real cold. It or it don't even have to actually snow. James Fan and West White and say it might snow. Yeah. And that's all the excuses that we need. <laughs> Fight them out. There's a whole lot of people that are lost because they got intimidated. So I'm going to hold up remember Big Bad Mike Tyson. And so you notice a lot of his first round knockouts and people that was afraid of him. I was watching this one of these old fights or whatever, and the man wouldn't even look at him in the eye. Mm. Looking down at his man. Mike Tyson standing on his knee with him the whole time, breathing all hard, and see, time to bear wrong. Mike Tyson came out about 15 seconds, almost on the mat. <laughs> Got a little million miles and went on home. Probably needed a wheelchair. Knock him out. And it's gone for several years. And they put Big Bad Mike up in there with somebody who wasn't scared of him. Like Buster Douglas, like Evander Holyfield, and they on uh, uh, Lenny Lewis. They told Lenny Lewis he gonna eat his children. Mm. Lenny Lewis was bringing on me. <laughs> see, they weren't scared of him. And see, for a lot of us, there's all that we talk about. I ain't scared of them. I'm a beautiful devil. I'm stomping on the devil's head. The devil ain't intimidated with that crap. And all the devil got to do is sneak up behind you and brawl there like say, boop, and there you go, you gone. But see, that's fear for you. And the Bible tells us that fear has torment. People are always scared of everything, everybody, they don't live people like it. And a lot of people say they're actually afraid of the very progress they say they move. But see, this is how the devil operates. See, nowhere in Scripture do we see where just the devil just come out at you at full force. A lot of times, most times, they'll come at you at, at a full frontal assault. Right. As wise or as wicked as they may be, the evil are not fools. Right. He's very calculated. Very. And he's looking at you for your moment of weakness. That's why there's an old saying that says, the lion always knows the number of the sheep. He always looks for an opportunity to devour. And see, you got some people after Christmas, you know, and they ride through the neighborhood and they smile at you and they wave. The garbage man riding by the neighborhood after Christmas, picking up all the trash you put out on the side of the street. Now, look at this big old 48 inch TV they got. Oh boy, look at all this. These appliances and stuff they got. And see, they know what time you go to work. And they know how long you're going to work. Mm. And they know when you come back. And they come and get your stuff. Mm -hmm. But see, that's just the devil being the devil. He comes to kill, he comes to steal, and destroy. Now, let me stop right there. Let me break it down for you. He comes to kill, then he comes to steal, then he comes to destroy. See, he comes to kill. He wants to kill you, you're absolutely zero threat. And after you have been killed, then he come in and steal everything you got. Well, he steal everything that he wants that is of value to him, and everything that he does not want, but he destroys. It's just like somebody doing a home invasion, and they break in your house, and they kill you, and they steal all your valuable stuff, everything they can carry, and everything that they can't carry, but they don't want nobody else to have it, and they burn your house down. And that is the devil. And he is who he is because he does what he does. And the devil does not just come to steal our life. The devil he comes to steal our joy. He comes to steal our home. He comes to steal our marriages. He comes to steal our family. He comes to steal our children. He comes to steal our hope. He comes to steal our desires. And after everything has been stolen, see, you have nothing. And how the devil operates. Number one, there is oppression. Two, suppression. Three, repression. His fourth mode of operation is regression, then depression, then possession. First, he oppresses you, then he suppresses you, then represses you, then he regresses, then he depresses, then he possesses. Ain't left nothing. And now you all weighed down with all types of hurt, 
all type of sense of lack, a whole lost your sense of purpose, your sense of value. Thank the God, but I'm here to tell you that the devil is a lie from the pits yes, he of hell. Yes, you he have been redeemed by the yes, blood of yes. Jesus Christ because you are a child of Christ. You are a child of the most high God. All right. And time is up, and time out, and time over. All We're right. walking around with our heads hanging down, walking around looking all pitiful. Every time you open your mouth, you got some pitiful to talk about. You got some sad to talk about. You got some depressed to talk about. You always talk about if it wasn't for bad look, you wouldn't have none at all. But that's a lie right there. And thank of God, we don't believe in no look. We don't believe in no 50-50. Ain't nothing 50-50 about victory through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 50-50 means nothing gamble. I never heard anybody gamble with God. It ain't no gamble. It's a sure thing. It's a sure victory. Nobody can say, I tried God and God didn't work. All right now. And see, I saw on the uh, um the Vice Channel some years ago. It was talking about how lucrative is this uh, casino thing in here. And they went in and uh they were part of the the uh the casino that was blocked off when they Clean up the other one. They clean up one side and they, they let one side stay while they clean up another and vice versa. The man went in there, uh, uh, he saw the slot machine and the one on man. They called it one on man for a reason. He looked up there and they had the little crucifix up there. And some people had a little, little rolls of beads that they wear at the Catholic Church. And some had a little giddy, a little small Bible up there. And some had a little card with Jesus' face on or whatever. That don't bring you no victory. That don't issue out no pain. Man. They got those machines rigged up. They, they, they shoot out a payday every so they go ahead and play with calibrate, you know, to kick out a payday for so long. That's why they say the house moves always win. The house always wins. All right. Mm -hmm. So believe me, we don't believe in no love and no spiritual shenanigans. Who the devil care about you hanging something in his face? <laughs> Crucifix, you take it off from you, beat you with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You got to know your end. Because he know you. You know me, you know us. He already eyes and spied you out, brother and sister. And he looking for that weak point. The best time to attack when you're asleep. The best time to attack when you're at home. The best time you're down here breaking something you ought not to be breaking. Or smoking something you ain't supposed to be smoking. Or doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. You got to get your weakest moments. Both times you laugh with a smile on your face. See, and the United States alone has a contingency plan to go and attack any country they want to. Why they got a plan? They got eyes and spies everywhere. Uzbekistan and 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 Earth, Jokerstan and this young Stan, and you look country you never even heard of. Right now, the United States got the CIA folks there on the ground spying out looking. Because they know they're in a potential enemy. The word of God tells us we're not to be ignorant with his devices. Somebody give me a time check real quick. It is 11, 12, 12 or 5. Okay, we got a few more minutes to go. And just like uh, 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 Kmart, shut it down. <laughs> Several ways to notice demonic power. Crime. Number two, immorality increase. Number three, love of money. Number four, apostasy. Number five, demon worship. <clears throat> Crime, now we are, that, that goes without saying. Just last week, we already hit uh, the high mark for homicide right here in the city of Birmingham. Uh, we ain't made it to June, we ain't made it halfway through the year yet. Uh, it's just March, mid March. But 15th is what, Tuesday, Wednesday? Wednesday. He made it halfway through March. Mm -hmm. And we already, we gonna, we will be more than them in a minute. Yeah. Now the word of God is going to tell us that the Christ said in the latter days you're going to see these things. Well see this stuff always been going on. Ever since Cain killed Abel, it's been going on. But see this is the same, I mean this is the same from God. It is the, the, the frequency and the amount of it that's going on. 
It used to be a time you didn't hear nothing about somebody going to a school or restaurant doing lunch hour and somebody pull out a salt weapon and get motor place down. And as time goes on, you hear more often, more often, more often, to the point of them bother you no know, more. You know, the way a lot of us see as long as they shoot up my job, or long as they shoot up the school my little child go there, I'm all right. Mm-hmm. But the time goes, they got to end it operating and not doing nothing. You see, thanks to God, the only necessity for evil to prevail is when good men get absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And we're not saying anything, we're not doing anything. Immorality is increased. And this is why I want the young, the youth, the young adults to get to hear me real good. If you got an iPad or a cell phone or whatever, shut it off. Because it ain't doing nothing for you. All this other stuff can't do, all this uh, uh, social media stuff can't do nothing for you. This right here is what's going to do. This is your social media right here. And I'm taking somebody to pass this morning. It may not be anybody here, but it's going to be somebody that you know. See, they're lying to, I'm talking to the teenagers, young adults specifically. See, we had a time now where they tell you what is right is right and what is wrong. I mean, uh, what used to be right is now wrong and what used to be wrong is now right. How many of y'all have seen the increase in these commercials that come on telling me it was same-sex couples? They're kids and everything. See, same-sex, they want to sell you a bowl of soup or a bowl of cereal or some biscuits or whatever. And show you two same-sex couples in the bed together, wake up, right, right, go down and eat some biscuits and gravy or whatever. Right, right. Yeah. And then they got a thing where they say, oh, oh, if you're not with it, where is you wrong? But what the word of God says? Says that it is not right for a man to lay with a woman as he would, I um, mean, lay with a man the way he would with a woman and vice versa. That's what the word of God says. Well, you are homophobic. What makes you think that? The word phobia means you're afraid. It means you're scared of something. I'm not scared of you because you like the same sex. I'm just giving you the word as it says. You know, somebody else wrote this. I did. I'm just saying. Well, if I can't speak, then I can use sign language. I'm not the author of it. Now, a lot of times we beat up on the same sex community when we leave them alone. Then you go to a thought. I heard somebody say, this is my work husband. Mm-hmm. This is my work wife. Mm-hmm. No, your wife is your wife. Right. And your husband is your husband. Right. Right. That is it. That don't mean they ain't I don't write. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. And a whole lot of other stuff. Well, you know, when God said, see, back then they didn't have this kind of device. And they didn't do that another blah, 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 blah. What was God might have made? No, listen. The word of God says God created man. It didn't say man created God. God created man in his image and his likeness. But see, now we're going to create God in our likeness and what you want. That's true. Mm-hmm. And then get mad because we don't get the results that we want. Mm-hmm. We are the creator. Right. We are the creature, right. not the creator. But see, the word of God tells us that in these latter days, this, this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to say that there for the last. And let me, I just gave y'all the small guns. Now let me put that to be. And I gave y'all that little snug nose, 38. Yeah. Now let me give you a tech knife. It's time for us to get united in the body of Christ. Philippians 2 and 2, to give ye my joy, that ye be like man. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. First Peter three and eight. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brethren, be pitiful of high, brethren, be courteous. Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Now look, thank of God, you got compassion with somebody, you know, and, and I'm, I'm gonna raise the age thing just a little bit. You know, when you've been with the same man, or you've been with the same woman for 30, 40, 50 years, and you can understand after 30, 40 years of marriage, you know, leave their socks on the floor, or they might not put the cap on mm-hmm. the, the toothpaste, mm-hmm. or they might not put the lid on the orange juice, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all the way. 
may drink the Kool-Aid down to the last little bit, you don't make no more. <laughs> and you can get me in there like that, because you got some passion for you. You got some CRs on the top. <laughs> But see, when you're young and foolish and everything got to be your way, then yeah. you make a mountain out of a molehill. So change brings about friction <laughs> when you're gelling things together. So there's no overnight success. I'm reminded of a TV show. I'm very respectful for the time. I won't be long at all. Not much long. But I remember this TV show coming on called Living Cup. And it had to be an old man and an old lady. They always trying to wait to kill each other. You know, the lady go to the <laughs> stove and she opens the stove and then he got like a boy and arrow coming to try to get her and he goes ahead and going through the mall. And then he go over to the refrigerator and some, you know, uh, uh, the power surge or some big spark and shoot out. They always trying to kill each other right in. But we still here. <laughs> but see, that's because they had compassion. After trying to kill each other. They kill each other. <laughs> But see, I say this to the young people nowadays. And I'm taking the gloves off because somebody got, got to give you the truth. I don't know what you're getting at home, you know, with your pants, but uh, that's not my domain. But I know what I see out here in the streets. Amen. Amen. See, you don't have to go and get no gun and, and shoot somebody. Just stand them and keep shooting them and shooting them and shooting them and shooting them over some junk. Over nothing. Want to go and just stand over somebody and just unload the whole gun on them. Over an old price pound shoot. Don't matter what it is. Over something because it got DKNY on the side, or got Michael Kors on the side, or probably got Prada on the side, or got Gucci written in the back of it. You worried about somebody else? Now, what about your name, child of God? All right. All right. And from what I can see, thanks for God. The young children ain't getting no love. You see, the children show the disease. They say charity starts at home, but here in 2022, guess what? It ain't no home. And I want to urge a lot of you parents here today. You should and you need to have dinner around the dinner table as a family as often as you can. Sit down and talk with your children. Instead of trying to be a friend, sit down and have a bond with your children instead of all this paycheck parenting. You think you're a parent of the year? You want an award? Come, so, well, I just bought my child with this here, and I just gave my child this here, and, and my little boy said he's the only boy in the school that got the past year, and my daughter said she's the only one that got a little purse like this. What else? You want a cookie? My daughter. That ain't parenting. That ain't raising a child that's maintaining one. But if you're not raising them, just pay checking. And by the way, you're just teaching a bunch of bad financial advice. All dressed up with nowhere to go. Young girls open their mouths, a bunch of family coming out. Young boys open their mouths, a bunch of family coming out. Walking around with your pants hanging all the way down to the back of your thigh, midway to your thigh. And I want to ask some of our young black men here. Hit up right there. Why in the world y'all out here? What? See, y'all ain't the one that bought them. Your parents bought them for it, but you need points for it. Why in the world y'all here wearing jeans and pants off the top? They don't even fit you. This stuff is made for them Chinese guys. Look at the back of the label. You ever order something off of eBay or off of Amazon and tell you have a United States measurement, they have a Chinese measurement, they got one in the UK. That stuff ain't made for us. <laughs> See, they make them jeans. They make it for Gucci and Pookie and Tookie and Ray Ray and JoJo. They made it for Ling Ling, Ling Ching and Wayne. Huh. <laughs> now, 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 watch this. How many of y'all here know who George Washington Carver is? Talk to the teenagers. Somebody wake up with orange shirt on. Oh. Y'all know who Joy Washington Carver is? Okay. Do you know who Dr. Charles Drew is? Okay. Do y'all know who owns the LA Lakers? Do you know who owns the Cleveland Cavaliers? Do y'all know who owns the Dallas Cowboys? Or do you know who LeBron is? I'm not sure how many of them are going to be on the shirt. You know who the Brian James is? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, where are you going? Okay. See, they know who the run is. Y'all don't step there is. But see, they don't know who the man is. They let me fault that they don't know. That's my job. That's, that's Pat Warren's job. You know, the poop, that's our job. The word of God tells you how they know they don't have a teacher and a preacher. They ain't been taught right. And see, I'm talking to the young teenagers right now. Why is it, especially with the young black boy, why is that every rapper, he does not manifest anything manly? You got the rappers out here now wearing women's clothes and girls' clothes. You know, all their names are Lil. I'm Lil Joe. I'm Lil Bo. I'm Lil Rick. I'm Lil V. I'm Lil Down. And his name ain't Lil. You know, I'm Young Bro. I'm Young Joe. I'm Young Mom. I'm Young Bro. You're a Young Dummy. How about that? 35 years old, boy, calling yourself Joe Baby. Lil Baby. I'm going to go home to my career because I'm a baby. But I'm calling on young black men here today to rise up and assume your rightful place in the kingdom. A man of God is what you need to be speaking. Something has to be fundamentally wrong if you want to be the employee and not the employer. See, even if I had the body that I had when I was 21, I don't want to be no football trucking and no basketball dunking player. I want to be the man that write the check. I want to be the man that own the team. The word of God says right there is you shall be a lender and not a father. So that people will respect you when you stand up and speak. They're right. gonna take you serious. Your pay is hanging off of you. They're right. gonna take you serious. Your cleavage and your breast all poking all out. They're right. gonna take you serious when you go to apply for a job or to an interview and he can see your panty lines from way down the street. Yeah. He's trying to hire you. He's trying to do something else with you. Right. Or he's trying to hire you so he can do something else with you. Yeah. Get to harassment on the job. I told y'all sure foundation. I wasn't gonna be long, but I'm gonna be strong. We dealing with a very real enemy. He ain't choking, he ain't praying. And it will behoove us to get on the J O B. The stuff is very real. And see, and I'm getting ready to bring this thing to a sure foul close. Won't y'all pass to understand? Why is that? I just called out the names of these rappers, and y'all didn't know what you didn't know. I just called out the names of, of, of famous people, of, of people of, of influence. Nobody knew. Which would make me wonder, what are y'all talking about at home? What is time is time people? I okay. told y'all, I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to be strong. Get ready. Bring it back. We got to be determined that we want victory. Nick Saban is just rolling out the bed and becoming the greatest football coach of all time. Kareem Abdul Jabbar and other people, Michael Jordan, they just rolling out. The bed and all. They went at it. They had a plan. But well, see, this right here is our plan. And nobody can say that they failed at you. Nobody. It's, a, it's an endurance of baseball. You're not going to win every game. You're not going to win all the time. I want y'all to go back to what I said before. See, the devil, he has to, to oppress us first. And see, and then we get, it gets in our mind this is the battlefield of the devil. The balance of the mind and our eyes are the window to the soul. See, especially the young people, y'all sitting around here with the cell phones, all the stuff, walk right down the street, get ran over by a bus. You're not paying attention to what you're doing. So I want the young people to understand. I understand time change. And, you know, you can't go about with a child or teenager, you young enough, whatever, the way you see it 25 years ago. But I want y'all to understand something very important. Uh, going down memory lane, I can remember times when the words computer and black folks weren't even used in the same thing. 
That's the time when the average black person couldn't even afford a cell phone. Right. I can remember the time, this is 1985-86 currency. It costs $3,000 to get a cell phone and have it installed in your car. A long electronic down there by the window on the south side when they get right. you. They took right. all they do. But now we just become some old cyber junkies. Just from some, some click clack ads. And see, what are you talking about on social media? Somebody say something about you that you don't like, man, and we'll go away and fight with us. It's childish stuff, man. And leave that mess alone. And when adults come in, you got to monitor and then give the youth a plan for success. See, people who have no future only prolong their prices. People who have no future just prolong their prices. And that's why we're just walking around, much ado about nothing, nowhere to go, nothing to do, no plan to even get there. Hebrews 3 and 4, for every house is built by some man, for he that built all things is done. Proverbs 24 and 27, prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thy house. And Hagar 1 and 8, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. And so all that's saying is we got to be diligent about building our house. Amen. First and foremost, God's house, and then our own house. That means picking up a trade, learning how to use, do something with your hands instead of all this keyboard tripping and, and uh, uh, thumb thugging that you're doing. Y'all like to wear all these nice clothes, whatever, they learn how to manufacture these clothes. For 400 years, black folks picked cotton for white folks. It's only natural that we put some cotton seeds in the ground and we'll make stuff for us. It's called self-sufficiency. There is dignity in God. Nobody likes you when you're broke. Nobody respects you when you're broke. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and a sure dwelling in a quiet resting place. How many of y'all want to live a nice quiet? <laughs> oh, now, y'all, y'all still with me. How many of y'all want to live in a nice quiet? How many of y'all want to go on to a house with a lot of fussing and cussing, 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 cussing? Nobody? And my people, that means God's people, talking to the Christian, shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. Peace and in sure dwelling. Y'all mean A sure dwelling means that's your house. You can build your house, your house. You got to live with your girlfriend and your baby mom. And she get mad and push you out, you go back to your mom. At the crib. And listen, he's done that either. <laughs> well, we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. And on that note, I'm going to bring to the last goal that we are here to redeem ourselves back to God. Amen. Job 19 and 25 to 27. I know that my Redeemer lives right. and that in the end, he will stand on earth. Right. And after my sin has been destroyed, Yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart, heart yearns within me. I know that my Redeemer lives. And I'm glad to say that we serve a God that wants to redeem us and reconcile us back to him. Because anything else is death. God is alive. L-I-B-E. Anything else is the opposite. Like live and life fell back. Evil. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. And all of this shall be added unto you. Everybody in here has a coupon. And that coupon is Christ Jesus. We're getting salvation. We're getting deliverance on a discount because the, the one that we truly serve and we have to mind. He paid a price that he did not have to pay for a debt that he did not owe. Thank you for the time. Thank you for passing on, for sharing the full here with me this morning. Thank all the other beautiful elders and ministers and deacons and deaconesses here in the house of God. Hopefully I have said something that will stir you up. And by the way, this is just an appetizer for a real buffet that's coming in the month to come. Thank you for the time that I have been here. Thank you for the time that I've been Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.
that doesn't know the Savior. You see all of these things again. He told us to rejoice. Right. And we're, we're not rejoicing over the contents of what happened, but what God's word said. He said, rejoice. Why? Because our redemption is going to not. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Leave it all, leave also in me and my Father's house. Many men. It wasn't so I was told. But he said, I'm going away. But I'm going to come back again and receive you unto myself. But where I am, there you will be also. So he's coming back. Yes, he is. Uh, people today, they, they don't believe it. They keep hearing the same thing. When they bring the jury preach, they see so much corruption in the world. The Bible told them that. They're going to get wise and wisdom. But them that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. He is coming back. And it's a whole lot closer than what you think. Amen. Amen.